ourselves, without any exception. The fact that we do need to remember that we're going to die. Every man, woman, child someday will die. It's one of the debts that we have to pay for the original sin of Adam. And so death is a punishment for sin. Before uh, Adam ate that apple, they wouldn't have died. But right. now, this is one of the punishments. And so we are, um, you know, we're all going to die. It doesn't mean that death has to be bad. Um, we want to actually for a good, holy, and a happy death. In other words, we want to die with grace on our souls so that we are clothed with the garment that we need to go to the banquet of the king. In other words, to go to heaven. Right. And so this is, uh, you know, this is why we're talking about death, which you know, a lot of times people think is just a morbid thing or something not to be thought about. If we sterilize it, sanitize it, let the funeral directors take care of that. I'll go you know, and pay my rest and that's it. I don't want to think about death. But that's actually a bad attitude to have because nobody escapes death. You know, someday it's going to come upon us and we, we know uh, so often. You know, just last week there were three teenagers that were killed in a car accident. And I'm sure that morning they weren't expecting that that was going to be the last day of their lives. Right. Um, other people live to be, some people die, uh, you know, in childhood, middle age. But it, it, it comes, our Lord says, like a thief in the night. And we don't, won't know the day nor the hour. And so, you know, that's, that's why I'm very glad you're asking <laughs> me to uh, kind of talk about these things. It's a good thing to, to think about death, since we've got to go there today, we might as well be prepared. None of us gets out of life alive. <laughs> That's, death is the great equalizer, right? Because yeah, yeah. no matter how many riches you had in this world, no matter how famous you were, no matter how, you know, how many employees you had, there's one thing that makes us all equal, and that is that we all have to die someday. I know a lot of people talk about how they, oh, I, I, I want to go in my sleep, because they don't want to think they don't have to feel anything if they go in their sleep they don't see it coming and it's a better way to go but you know when you think about it with a sudden death or going in your sleep you don't have time to go you know it's, the thought processes aren't working there so you can't go I need to go to confession I need to my, say my act of contrition before I die and you want to have that opportunity that last opportunity to make perfect confession before you die I want to have all my faculties present I want to 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 do that as you say it I can be sorry for my sins. Um, I want to have the grace of a good death. The grace of a good death, from a Catholic perspective, means that we have a be there. So they're crossing over from this life to the next life. And in fact, just this morning, I was at the bed of a dying person, helped there to give us the last rites of the church, the mm -hmm. sacraments, the beautiful prayers that are in that. that there's a ceremony that the priest goes to the bed and says the prayers to help the person in priesting where we we can repent and you know i can't guarantee that if i went when i'm the name of jesus in their ear uh, reading from sacred scripture praying to the saints and the angels that they will intercede and also pray for that person and so that's the kind of death that we should all hope for eyes is their hearing and so you're there encouraging them whispering you know she didn't appear to be conscious mm -hmm. however we know that one of the last things to go before somebody with that um, the sleeping I would have remembered to be sorry for all of my sins and yeah. you know made all of my my peace with all the people that I maybe had offended or had offended me and so it, it really is a you know that's part of that sanitizing of death we don't want to see it out of sight out of mind well you know just because uh, I say I don't want to look at the Sun I, I I just it's too bright I don't want to I'm going to pretend like it's not there. It doesn't mean that I'm still not going to get a sunburn if I sit out in the sun. So right. I might as well put on the sunscreen and yeah. keep my eyes open. And there's always a consequence to our action, no matter what it is. And, right. But, uh, Father, with, with death, when uh, you think about, I mean, somebody dies at the funeral. Now, the funeral isn't just for the dead person. It's for the living, too, to get re reconciled and to keep in their mind it to uh, maybe wake him up and say, hey, this is coming for you. You know, you don't know when he's well, coming. Well, in fact, I would, I would flip what you said, that it, it's not just for the dead, but for the living. In this day and age, I would say it's not just for the living, but it's also for the dead. Right, yeah. I think that mercifully, God gives us a chance to purge 
those sins, that unfinished business from our soul. And that's where the, the concept of purgatory comes in. Right. I know, a very misunderstood concept, but purgatory is a place where people who die with grace on their souls, but have a little bit of unfinished business, either um, venial sins or, or punishment, uh, a barrier between me and God. Maybe I, I do start to have a little bit of doubt of faith or something like that. And if I have smaller sins, not enough to take the grace from my soul, but enough to leave smudges on there, okay. I can't, you know, even those small smudges would be such a charitable, especially, you know, as I'm going through the, the throes of death, um, many people have the false assumption that the funeral is where we go and pay respects to the family and comfort the family. And that is a big part of it, sure. no doubt about yeah. that. However, and probably more importantly, it's for the soul of that person who has departed from this life. They need our prayers because from our you know, teachings of our Lord, sacred scripture, and the Catholic faith, we know that nothing impure, nothing imperfect can enter heaven. Right. When I die, you know, I may be, I may have grace on my soul. I haven't committed a mortal sin. But I may have been impatient. I might have been. A, they haven't paid for that, paid that price yet on this earth, and so this prepares us. It's a, it's a wonderful thing that we have this place to be purged of our imperfections, and so that's why we have, you know, this concept of purgatory. Yeah, the, um, the cleanliness. I mean, it's it's uh, not just physical. I mean, people worry about taking a shower before they go out and, and put on nice clothes to go to dinner. But when they go to when they come to mass, a lot of times they're not. You know, it's like blue jeans and t-shirts and uh, and the respect and uh, for for God and, and ourselves. You know, it, the cleanliness. You know that I look at the confessional as a shower. <laughs> I go go in to get cleaned up. You know, for for to receive my Lord. You know, when it's more like a deep Eucharist. sanitation sink where you're yeah. totally immersed in. Another baptism. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 We are a personal Savior, uh, or in touch with our per Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior in that respect. He's, oh. he's right there in our tower. Which is well supported in Scripture. And, and yes, that's why every person should have a daily prayer life with our Lord. Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior because I'm following everything that he taught. Everything, not just picking and choosing. Right. But following everything, and that includes all the sacraments that he established, which are well supported in Scripture, the church that he found. Well, how close can you get? <laughs> I, I fully believe that, right. that, that if you want to have a personal relationship with him, which is, he too established a sacrifice. Right. Well, he really fulfilled the old sacrifice, and, he's, and of course Moses got the laws, the more specific laws from God, about the sacrifice in the temple. Very specific. You know, God said, this is what I want sacrificed. This is how I want you to do it. He didn't just say, well, whatever makes you feel good will make me feel good. Right. He said no. And in fact, we see in the Old Testament, many times people were severely chastised by God, punished, sometimes even put to death for giving false worship or by giving a uh, you know, false sacrifice. Right. God says, I know what I want. Do it my way. And then in the New Testament, when Jesus came, very important, and you have to spend time in prayer, and you have to spend time pleasing Him, worshiping Him, how He has told us, how God has told us He wants to be worshipped. Yeah. It's always been, I think we met, talked about this in the last show, from, from the very beginning, God has always been pleased with sacrifice. Adam, and, Adam sacrificed, Abraham sacrificed, Noah, Moses, the sacrificial victim. Right. He himself became the priest offering the sacrifice. In the Old Testament, you had you had an animal usually, or wheat, or, or first fruit, something like that. Right. You had a priest appointed by God, one of the Levites, mm -hmm. to offer the sacrifice, and then you had destruction of that gift. Those are the three things you need for sacrifice. A victim, a priest, and destruction. And what do we have in the New Testament? We've got the victim, it's Christ himself. Right. We've got the priest offering it, Christ himself, and we have destruction of the gift in his death for us, death and resurrection. And what did he do? He gave us the ability to do that.